Hello! Today we're going to create a new client using the Neocera Client Activity Tracking System. There's actually two ways that you can create a new client into your Neocera database. One is by doing the data entry directly in Neocera, and that would be done by you or one of your colleagues within your organization. Another way of getting new clients into your database would be to pass along your eCenter Direct client signup link to your clients and have your clients actually fill out the online application form themselves. And then all you need to do is process and accept their application. Obviously, if you need to do the data entry, it's going to be a little bit more effort. Um, and of course, when the client does it, you need to double check all the data entry. During this video, we will approach both methods. Let's first take a look at how we can create a client in the Neocera database where you do the data entry. In order to create a new client, you're going to have to go to the View Clients menu. There you will click on the New link to enter into what we call the Determination screen. On this very first screen, you will determine whether you're going to create a client or a pre-client, an in-business entity or a pre-venture entity. Depending upon each of the choices that you select here, the appropriate fields will appear in the subsequent screens. So that's why we call this the determination screen. Your name, the person who's logged in, will automatically default to the counselor on record. If you're not actually going to be the counselor for this client, then you can go ahead and make that change. And of course, we're going to enter in the company name of the client record. You can enter in the contact's name or the person's name if it is a pre-venture. But as soon as you type in something in the company name field, in the right-hand margin, you'll see possible du duplicates appear. If you see a possible duplicate, you can hover over that record, make sure it's not in fact a duplicate of the client record that you're working on, and if it is, then you need to make sure that you abandon it. It's absolutely important that you avoid creating duplicates in your database as much as possible. Well, we've talked a lot. Let's go take a look and see how this actually looks in Neocera. So, as I mentioned, we're going to click on the View Clients menu. Once we're here, we're going to click on the new link in the upper right-hand corner, and this will open up what we call the determination screen. Within the determination screen, the counselor has been automatically pre-entered for me based upon the person that is currently logged in. You will always see your own login information in the upper right-hand corner. The company name that we're going to fill it work with today is Eco-Friendly Cleaners. As soon as I typed in the word, the first few letters of the company, a possible duplicate popped up. I can hover over this record to determine if it is a duplicate of the record that I'm trying to create. And I see that no, it's not, because the company I'm working with is actually located in California, in Santa Barbara. So I type in the name of the company. I determine now whether this is a pre-client record or a client record. A client record would be somebody who has signed your agreement to become a client of your organization. They've met all the requisite requirements and they're basically going to be serviced as soon as we've entered them into the database. A pre-client is somebody who's not yet ready to become a client, but perhaps you want to keep track of your interactions with this particular organization um, as they progress forward. And some of your pre-clients may never become clients and it's totally fine to keep records in your database of organizations or entities that will never become a client and you just store them as pre-clients. The next determination we need to make is whether this is a pre-venture business or an established business. As soon as I say that this is an established business, I'm going to be asked for the date that they were established. Now let's take a look at the contact information. Again, for contacts, we're going to make sure that there's no duplicates being created in the database. So as soon as we type in the point of contact for this entity, we will see the duplicates um, popping up on the right hand side. If there is a duplicate, again, we're going to want to abandon or link that contact to this record. Because of course, multiple um, one person can have multiple businesses. So if John Doe has more than one business and John Doe is already in your database, then you can link John Doe to your new company. That would be a possibility. Upon completing the contact information, we're going to be asked to complete the address information. The address validation will happen as soon as we save the record. 
The NeoSera database will validate, validate against a U.S. Postal Service database and add the nine-digit zip if it's found. At that point, we will also add the county and congressional district information. If your mailing address and your physical address are different, then when you go on to edit the record a little bit later, then you can add the mailing address at that time. Let's again take a look and see what that looks like. So we're going to put in the name of our contact. It is Joseph Watson. We don't see any duplicates appear. And we go ahead and type in the information. And I don't know if you saw, but some duplicates appeared on the right hand side. But as I kept on typing, they disappeared again. All right, we have completed what we call the determination screen. So now when we go ahead and click save, we get to fill in the full client record. Defaults will be applied to your client record. So if your system administrator has set up some defaults, those will be automatically applied. If you are an SBA funded organization, then it's real important that you check and verify the initial company status because how the client comes to you will determine whether there is a business start down the road. In other words, if they come to you as a pre-venture, then any time when they form their business, that will measure as a business start. Also, employee count is critical in measuring job growth and annual sales figures are important to measure growth of sales over time. If you're a DLA funded program, then it's real important that you track the business size, whether the client is in a distressed area or not, and whether this is a covered business or not. Let's again take a look and see what this looks like. So we saved the record and we're now in the full data entry screen. So it's automatically assigned a client ID for us. It's determined that this client is an active client. They're coming to us to, for counseling purposes. The company name has been entered as has the phone number. And as we go through the screen, we can now update and add additional information into the system as appropriate. Again, I don't want to have you necessarily watch me do all the data entry. So we're gonna leave some of this information undone or unfinished. Um, and again, unless the field is mandatory with a red asterisk, you can leave it blank. Ideally, you capture as much information about your client as possible because ultimately that will help you in your tracking down the road. You'll notice that there's a little help next to some of the fields. This can be added by your system administrators. Also, the fields that you see on my screen may or may not necessarily correlate to the fields that you see on your screen. Every database administrator can customize the fields that are shown within the interface and what fields are made mandatory. So that's not something that is set by NeoSera. That is something that you will ultimately control. Similarly, when we look at these drop-down menus, any choice that you see within the drop-down menu is actually determined by your system administrator. That's something that your lead center can customize and cater to the specific needs of your program. As soon as we are done doing all of our data entry, we can go ahead and click continue. Once we complete all the information, we of course want to verify the contact details and we're going to then save the contact um, record as well. First of all, it's going to um, email the point of contact some details about eCenter Direct, which is where the client can go in the future to sign up for training events. I'm not going to send this at this point. And then here are the details about the point of contact. So we can identify the salutation, the address automatically carried over. We can update any kind of characteristics that we may know about this individual, and we can save once our record is completed. Having clicked save, we are now on the contact record. Let's go ahead and click on the client record. So here we see eco-friendly cleaners is the name of the client. Our one contact in the right hand margin currently is Joseph Watson. We can add additional contacts simply by clicking new in the contact box. Let's take a look at some of the options that are available in the right hand panel. At the very top of the screen, we could see the local information. I just mentioned that you can add additional contacts. If and when there is activity, we can take a look at that activity information in the right-hand panel. 
We can add any kind of file attachments and an administrator can view the audit information. Let's take a look at those options. So the local information right here tells us what time it is at the client's location. Contacts, we can add a new contact if necessary. As we start to counsel this client, the activity summary pane will be in, will grow and show um, counseling sessions that have been conducted with the client. We can upload documents. If this client has signed a hard copy service agreement, then we could upload that here simply by clicking the upload button and then the document can be attached. And then last but not least, this audit blog right here is primarily intended for your system administrator, but this allows them to see who created the record and who has made any subsequent edits to the record. You can also add a sticky note to the client. If for some reason this client has not yet signed your agreement, then this might be something that you want to note. So the next time you meet with a client, you're going to want to ask them about their service agreement. So let's go ahead and add a sticky note. So ask Joseph to sign service agreements the next he comes to visit. All right, so this yellow sticky note at this point is visible only to me. So this sticky note, I can save it and this will now be attached to the client record. Anytime I open EcoFriendly's record, I will remember to see that sticky note. So the next time I see the client, I can ask him to sign our service agreement. If I feel that I want my colleagues also to be aware of this particular note, then I can at this point share it and share it with my colleagues. So now anyone who accesses this client record will see my sticky note. Sticky notes are not intended to capture any meaningful information about your clients. They're really truly meant as temporary reminders for yourself, similar to the way you would use a physical sticky note and stick it onto your monitor. So this is simply a sticky note attached to the client record. You may have noticed that, there, that we didn't really use the save button and that's because you can simply press enter. Let me show you how that might be. If I wanna edit this record, I can go ahead and click the edit option, add a secondary phone number and when I hit enter at this point, it will automatically save the record. In other words, I did not need to go to the bottom of the screen to hit the save button. The phone number was automatically saved when I hit enter. Now, what about the delete option? Well, not all of you may necessarily have a delete button. And that is because the permissions to delete are assigned by your lead center. This is not something that Outreach Systems has any control over, nor will we be able to um, change your permissions. This is something you will need to work out with your lead um, system administrator. Assuming that you do have the delete option, then you'll notice that it's found underneath the more menu. So underneath the more menu is where we added the sticky notes and at the very top of the screen you'll also notice that you can delete the record here. Let's take a look at some of the other options. We can also schedule a follow-up with this client. I could transfer this client to another center. I can add this client to a survey list and I can email this client. Unfortunately, in this video, we won't be able to go through all of those options, but it's just something for you to be aware of. All right, while entering clients into the NeoSera database is something that you'll do from time to time, Ideally, we hope that most of your clients are going to be sent to eCenter Direct to complete the new client registration form themselves online. In order to make sure that your clients sign up with your center, you'll need to make sure that you give them your link to eCenter Direct. So how do we obtain your link? Well, let's go take a look. Your center is going to be listed underneath the View Centers menu. Identify which center is your center. I will go ahead and click on the Malibu Center. And if you want to provide your clients with a direct link to your signup process, then underneath the More eCenter Signup Menu option, you'll notice that there's a URL that's provided right here that you can give to all of your clients to directly sign up with your center. Now, what happens when a client signs up with your center? Let's take a look. 
on the home page, you'll know right away that a new client signup has been received based upon the link update that takes place in the upper right-hand corner of the NeoSera homepage. And of course, we visit the NeoSera homepage always by clicking on the NeoSera logo. If a new signup has been received, then we can click on the number next to the signup. If there's more than one, then all of them will be listed right here. We notice that Bell's Bakery has recently signed up using our online registration form. All the details have been entered in this case by the client online. We can review all those details and based upon the information that they have filled out, we can decide whether we want to accept this client, whether we want to reject them, perhaps they're outside of our service area, perhaps they need assistance that we cannot provide, whatever the reason for rejection may be, you can choose to reject them or you could possibly transfer them to another center within your program. And that might be if they are asking for a service that you can't provide, maybe one of your other centers might be able to provide that service. But let's assume that we want to accept this client into the database. Then what we do is we click the accept button, which will then convert this record to a true client record. As soon as that conversion is done, that yellow bar at the top of our screen will disappear and this will be a regular client. So we're gonna go ahead and convert this record to a client. We can optionally choose to send a welcome message. We can assign the client to a counselor. If this is not the counselor who's gonna be working with this client, then we can choose a different counselor. When we assign a client to another counselor, that counselor will be notified via the message center that a client has been assigned to them. The message center is a green bubble that you might periodically see appearing at the top of the screen to let you know when something has occurred that you need to be aware of. When we go ahead and click save, we have the opportunity to edit the record, review all the information that we see here, make sure that everything is accurate and complete, if we're satisfied with it, then what we can do is go ahead and save the record right here at the bottom of the screen. Now you'll notice that the yellow bar at the top of the screen has disappeared and the client has been assigned the next sequential number for our center. What if I want to go back to a client that I entered in yesterday or potentially three days ago? What I can do, there's two ways to go back to a client. You can always use your recent history. Remember that we just recently were working with eco-friendly cleaners. If I need to go back to eco-friendly cleaners, rather than typing in all those letters, I can just look at my recent history. That's the icon at the top of the toolbar on the far right hand side. So the eco-friendly cleaners record, I can quickly navigate to there. And of course, there we see our sticky note that we've added. Alternatively, if this is no longer in your recent history, and it was perhaps a week ago or so that you entered the client record, what you can do is you can search for the client. Searching for clients um, is case insensitive to first of all, and secondly, it searches across multiple forms. So if I type in John, I might find all people with the first name of John, potentially with the last name of Johnson. I might find training events that are going to be taking place in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. So anything that matches on the first few letters that I start to type in will pop up on the screen. So let's take a look. If I do indeed search for John, I'll notice that I get John Johnson, and I get John Ruiz Company and Johnson Electric Company along with a whole slew of other companies, of course. And if I want to go to the John Ruiz Company, I can go ahead and click on their record and that automatically opens up that record for viewing at that time. All right, I appreciate your time. Please refer to the NeoSera FAQ library if you have any additional questions. We look forward to working with you and also feel free to access the rest of the videos that we have available for viewing. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.